Take a seat and uh, enjoy the highlights. They're good. First time I heard about Chris Flynn, Larry Utech had approached me about coming back to coach, and uh, he was after a top recruit out of Quebec uh, named Chris Flynn. He was supposed to be a super athlete, a uh, real winner at all levels, and uh, Larry felt that that was the player he needed to turn the program around, and uh, so in 1987, uh, we were introduced at training camp. Go from the double fullback formation. Flynn wants to put it up, does so into the end zone, touchdown! He'll run with it. Now he unloads it to Scholar, complete up around the 50-yard line. Oh, yeah, his reputation was big. <laughs> it was. And, uh, yeah, he put us on the map. I mean, you know, small St. Mary's University, we'd had no success in literally the decade before he got here. And next thing you know, we're number one in the country. And, uh, you know, putting up some big scores and, and marching away towards the Vanier Cup, that was a big deal for a lot of people. It didn't take long to, to see the values he brought uh, to the field. He was a tremendous... Uh, uh, leader. You could tell he wanted to win. He wanted to play right away. He was a rookie and uh, he was the hardest working player I've seen in all the years I coached football. I was involved uh, for four, all four years. He was a tremendous work ethic and then he became a student of the game and as he became a student of the game and understood the game, he went from a great athlete quarterback to a real good quarterback that could throw the ball with some dynamic receivers. You know, he had all those weapons. Um, and he exploited them. He, he would just he would just make things happen. If he needed 200 yards rushing that day, he did it. If he needed 300 yards passing, he did it. Well, he always had the great quick feet, and uh, wasn't the fastest guy in the world, but he had quick feet, and uh, he had an uncanny sense to uh, feel pressure uh, around him, and uh, uh, that was something that allowed him to escape. And once he got in the open field, he just had a knack. It was like playing uh, on the streets. He was uh, just a natural. <laughs> Flynn with the drop. Now he tries to get outside of the contain. Get some pressure. Hogwarts after him. And Flynn is all the way back to his 40-yard line. Finally unloads it over the middle. Complete. One yard line. No touchdown. Chris's individual distinctions are amazing. Four-time AUAA All-Star quarterback. Three-time CIAU All-Canadian quarterback leading rusher quarterback in CIAU history and his unprecedented three times as national MVP Heck Crichton Award winner. Chris was just really bright. He, he had a real sense of, you know, what was going to work, what wasn't going to work. I remember there was one game against Acadia uh, his second year, and all four receivers, all four starters were injured. And a uh, playoff game, and he didn't have much to throw to. And I remember talking to him about it, and he said, uh, we'll find a way to win. And that day, he rushed for over 200 yards as a quarterback, and we won the game. Each year, he built more confidence into the program. Uh, the players felt that with Chris, they could win. He could see it. They became better themselves. He made everyone around him better. And that was from his desire to win, his work ethic. But his numbers and his throwing statistics just became unbelievable. There was a lot of competition, but he was the best. And uh, you know, it's funny, you don't get perspective until kind of years go by. And, and you look at some of the, uh, the records he put up, the 87 touchdowns in four years, which is ridiculous. No one's close. From 1987 to 1990, all Chris Flynn did was set records. He threw for the top two single season passing performances in CIS history with 27 and 30 touchdowns. He has a CIS record 87 career touchdown passes and he is the first CIS player to be inducted to the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. You put the whole package together, there's no question Chris Flynn was the best quarterback that could ever play. Was he the best thrower? No. Was he the best runner? Probably. But you put everything together, the intangibles, the winning attitude, the work ethic, uh, and his numbers without question prove that he's probably the greatest quarterback, probably the greatest university player ever to play the game. You know, you get perspective, you know, 25 years later, how wonderful it was, you know, great team, uh, great atmosphere, um, you know, great culture, and Flynn reinforcing that, you know, every day. You know, the guys that stayed close um, 25 years later, and, you know, and, and you can't not look back without thinking of Chris Flynn and the incredible contributions he made.
So in researching your story a bit, it was, I'm not sure accident's the right word, but it's almost an accident that you even came to Nova Scotia. Am I kind of right? <coughs> kind of, yeah. I had uh, prop decided to go to Bishop's University in, uh, in Lennoxville. I was intending to go there, and Coach Utech had been calling me up uh, uh, all winter. I kept telling him, no thanks, I'm not interested. I'd already kind of made my decision to go somewhere else, but... Uh, he just called me on my spring break, and I just happened to be kind of bored in the middle of the spring break, not doing anything. So I said, sure, I'll come down on a recruiting trip. I didn't know about anything about St. Mary's or Halifax, but I came down. Uh, just It was a great week, and I fell in love with the city and the school. I re really clicked with Coach Utech, too, and uh, I'm glad I came down. I'm glad he called me that particular week, and I'm glad I came down on that, uh, on that recruiting trip. Anybody that talks about you and that era, they talk about how close that team was. And you always, in any interview I've seen, talk about teammates. That was a pretty close-knit group, huh? It was, and uh, it was a great bunch of guys. And, uh, and, and I think we were a close-knit team, just like any team that does well has to be. And uh, we got a lot of the guys are here tonight, too, visiting. And uh, it's great to see them tonight. And I think, uh, yeah, we were a pretty, pretty close team back then. Some of those plays we saw in the highlight reel, that's not exactly how they were called, right? No, Coach Robinson probably <laughs> <laughs> yelled at me a few times, and uh, it wasn't something I thought of or intended do, to do. I didn't even like scrambling around like that. It just kind of happened. I just, you know, tried to do whatever it took to to win, to help the team win. And whether it was scrambling around 30 yards behind the line, and sometimes I would get sacked way back there and whatever. But I just tried to do whatever whatever it took to win the game, and however manner it, it took and that's just the kind of player I was I guess when you were extending plays by by 15 to 20 to 30 seconds like that can, can you remember what was going on in your head was it was it panic or was it creativity or uh, somewhere in between I don't know just trying to survive just trying to <laughs> just trying to stay alive and uh, find a, an open receiver and I had some great receivers I see Bill Scollard on that interview Bill Scollard uh, Brian Smith, Matt Neal, and Ian McDonald had some pretty good receivers back then and, and a pretty good offensive line. And, and the whole team, our defense was pretty good. When I first got to St. Mary's, they hadn't won in previous years, but they had a pretty good team. And maybe they were looking for uh, you know, a missing piece, uh, uh, you know, maybe a quarterback. And I was just able to uh, come to, I think, join a pretty strong team. And uh, just uh, what, it's one of my proudest things is just coming to St. Mary's and helping you know, turn that team around and, uh, and turning them into a winning program. 25 years later, does it still bug you even 0.1% that the only game you missed in your entire college career was the 1990 Vanier Cup because of a, a concussion? Yeah, the 88 Vanier Cup. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, for sure it was the only game I ever missed. And to play the whole season, we went 10-0 that year. Beat Bishops, who had the number one ranked defense in the Atlantic Bowl. Uh, that's the game I got hurt in. I played the rest of the game. I remember I couldn't even see the scoreboard the whole rest of the game. But back then, with... When you got hit in the head or whatever, you uh, <laughs> you just kept playing. And uh, but they wouldn't let me play the next game in the Vanier Cup. And but that's that's sports and that's football. So uh, still a lot of great memories. Pick pick one as we wrap it up here. Pick pick a moment that to this day maybe it was on there, maybe it wasn't. That's still firm in your brain. Well, I guess the 1990 Atlantic Bowl against Western. They were the uh, number one ranked team in the country, defending Vanier Cup champs. And we were down with a minute left in our own end against those guys by. Down by five points, and uh, what you mentioned earlier about never giving up, and we didn't give up. We It wasn't looking very good, but we marched down the field, scored with eight seconds left to beat Western in the Atlantic Bowl, and I think that's uh, a lot of the guys' uh, uh, best memory is that, that game. Was that the 90-yard drive with a minute left? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, that was yeah. the 90-yard drive, yeah. yeah. You're too modest, man. This is the, the only three-time Heck Crichton winner, and you know, but Haley and I were talking before, this is how good you had to be. You know they didn't want to give it to you every year after you won it the one time. So that's how great he was to win it three years in a row. Congrats on a great career. Welcome to the Hall. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.